Good evening. For those who are here present at St. Louis Church in Fort Kent, thank you for coming in person, and we also welcome those who are joining us via live stream. As we begin day eight of our novena to St. John Vianney, asking for the intercession, his intercession for an increase in vocations of the priesthood here in the Diocese of Portland, as well as for all of our priests serving in this diocese. Tonight, as we get a clo uh, close, uh, fastly approach the end of this novena, we're on day eight, which speaks of the heart of the priest is the heart of Christ. So as we begin and prepare ourselves, let us call to mind and pray for our priests and pray for our seminarians who are, and those discerning, that they may incline them, their hearts to the Lord and let their hearts be like His in ministering to the people they are called to serve. Please stand.
Day 8. The heart of the priest is the heart of Christ. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. I am, the vine, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Just a reminder that we will have confession available. Um, if you head out back, um, Father Alex should be here shortly, but um, if you're looking to have confession, um, he should be out shortly to hear confessions. So they will be available for you during our time of reflection.
The heart of the priest is the heart of Christ. As we read in the gospel passage earlier this evening, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. And when, not only when we do this, but especially when a priest or someone called to be a priest places themselves in full trust and surrender to the Lord, we cannot help but see good fruit, fruit that comes from that. A priest's heart must be centered on Christ because each and every day he conforms himself, sacrifices himself at that altar each time, bringing to the faithful Jesus Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity. Uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen, a, a very um, popular Catholic theologian in the early or the mid 20th century, he wrote a wonderful book called A Priest Is Not His Own. And that is so true because a priest is not his own, he is Christ's. By virtue of his surrender at ordination, he becomes Christ's vessel. At a priesthood and even a diaconate ordination, there is a, a time during the liturgy where they do the litany of the saints, much like what we do at the Easter Vigil. But at that point, it's focused on the people praying for the, these people receiving the sacraments. And these men prostrate themselves on the ground, surrendering everything by placing themselves in the most vulnerable position possible, that on the ground. The priest is intimately related to Christ. By virtue of his ordination, he becomes in persona Christi Capitis, which means in the person of Christ, the figurehead. By baptism, we all participate in baptismal priesthood, which means that we are called to sacrifice our own lives and to abide in the presence of Christ. But in the ministerial priesthood, the priest is in uniquely linked to Christ in order to bring the sacraments to his faithful. By becoming that person of Christ, a priest conforms himself to live like Christ, to be another Christ. And a perfect example of the heart of the priest is the heart of Christ. We can look to St. John, the Beloved, because St. John was one of the closest disciples to Jesus, and he always reclined his heart close to Jesus' heart. And so there's a wonderful book called Insinu Yesu, which is within the heart of Christ. The author speaks about the pr priest conforming themselves to the heart of God. John Paul II, again in his 1986 re retreat for priests, says that a priest, in order to have the heart of Jesus, needs to be, first of all, a man of prayer. And in doing so, through prayer, through surrender, they receive union with God. Priests are also, yes, they're conformed, they're configured to Christ in a unique way by virtue of the sacrament, but they are mortal beings prone to sin, prone to struggles in their own life. And 2 Corinthians 47 reminds us of this as St. Paul says, we carry this treasure of the, 
and in this case the priesthood, in earthen vessels, so that we can reflect that this extraordinary power comes from God and does not come from ourselves. The priest also conforms himself in living in the trials and tribulations. And we must be, priests must be aware of this, the seminarians too, because St. Paul himself has experienced in his own ministry great pain, suffering, uh, tortures, and ultimately death for the cross. Priesthood, as wonderful as it is, and all the priests can attest to this, it does not come without its burdens. And this brings us to John Vianney. John Vianney, when speaking, when someone asking him about the struggles of being the pastor, working in the parish, and, and this was coming from another priest, John Vianney said, do not be afraid of your burden. Our Lord carries it with you. The difficulties of the apostle can come from outside when he's faithful in serving Jesus alone. The priest, and those especially striving towards virtue, can suffer mockeries and calumny, and also be shackled, like their freedom taken from them. We live in a time where priests are criticized, bad faith is given to them, secularization, of different priests, and also especially because of some actions of some priests, a lack of trust in priests. John Vianney gives us, gives the priest in those moments of persecution, the prayer in which to ask the Lord. It's not about me, it's not about the priest, it's about Christ. John Vianney's simple prayer, grant me the conversion of my parish. I consent to suffer all you wish the whole of my life as long as you convert my parish. As a youth during the French Revolution, he had once been asked what the definition of a priest was. A priest, he said, was a man who would die so that he could be a priest. Christ is the one who chooses the priest, who chooses the seminarian, and ultimately chooses us all for the particular vocation we are called to. In the sacrament of holy orders, Christ imparts the Holy Spirit on the priest candidate, and the priesthood is, is rooted in the mission of the Trinity, which is to bring all people to them. And the priest's mission is a mission of salvation. And ultimately, the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. John Vianney promised on his ordination date in 1815 to be a good priest. During ordination, a stole was placed on his shoulder a stole symbolizes, as you can see when, when you're around priests, especially in the confessional or even at mass, they wear a stole around their shoulders, which symbolizes their office as priests and, and their ministry. It also can be seen as like a yoke, a burden that they have accepted to be like Christ. If a priest is meant to be a priest and means to be a priest, then that stole weighs on the priest in the same way it weighs on Christ. The stole at times can have the weight of the cross, and at other times it can be light as a feather. Because Jesus reminds us to take up his cross and follow him and to rest our burdens on him because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's when we 
It's when priests fail to place their trust in the Lord that that stool can feel heavier than anything possible. John Vianney experienced the weight of this stool, especially as he was getting older. He, wasn't able, he lost all of his teeth, was not able to speak as well as he used to. He could not kneel when to pray. And so ultimately, the sermons of his last days were almost unintelligible, but the parishioners could notice that it was a deep conversation that he would have with the Blessed Sacrament. It was there that the faithful experienced the gift of the priest, who in his mind, heart, and spirit was in relationship with the one who gave him priesthood. He could not convey any more messages of wisdom or pastoral zeal to his parishioners, but he could give him the example of placing his burdens, his struggles, at the foot of the cross with the Blessed Sacrament. God, call, God, there's a saying in seminary, God forms the called. He does not call the formed. Not all priests are the same. As we, we like to have our curé of ours, we like to set him up at a high standard, a high pedestal, a model for us to follow. But not all are like that. Perfect example is of his parochial vicar, and so, don't worry, Father Labrie. Father Alex is a pretty good parochial vicar compared to Father Raymond here. <laughs> but Father Raymond, as a boy, saw the curé of ours and desired to become a priest. And upon his ordination, he desired to be like John Vianney rather than actually trying to be like Christ. A great temptation for for people, for priests and seminarians, is to try and be like someone who they admire or, or seek to, uh, that has good zeal. But they're called to be like Christ. And by being like Christ, that is all they need. Because anyone can be, be like Christ by grace, but no one can be anybody else even if they try to imitate them. Father Raymond freely thought that he could do just what John Vianney did, but he could, on his own merit, bring people to the community of ours, hear confessions for 18 hours a day, and he very much wanted to take over being the cure of ours. He wanted the admiration and the respect that comes, that came with what John Vianney was doing. And he, all, he would ridicule his pastor. And Vianney, in his humility, cooperated by allowing him, when he was trying to escape the parish, uh, at one time, he appointed him as his replacement. But then he returned, and Raymond, Father Raymond, even though he was 20 years younger, and John Vianney was the curé, the pastor, he would still sign his letters as if he were the pastor, and slept in John Vianney's room, in the, in the pastor's room, whereas John Vianney would sleep in a damp room on the ground floor without a complaint. The relationship between Ray, Father Raymond and John Vianney had started back in Father Raymond's formation where John Vianney had paid for his tuition. And he had done, and Father Raymond, unlike Father uh, St. John Vianney, he was very good with his academics. He was also a very good preacher. And he did so well that he would take over, he would dominate the pulpit at ours. And as I mentioned, he would sometimes use publicly the pulpit to ridicule his pastor. As though St. John Vianney was some old, dotting uncle that was in his care. 
The bishop of the diocese had heard of this and wished to remove Father Raymond. But again, John Vianney, in his humility, protested and said, let me keep him. He is not afraid to tell me the truth about myself. Because John Vianney died to himself, recognizing his limitations. And Father Raymond served St. John Vianney as a reminder, as a memento mori, which means remember your death, remember your limitations. Eventually, Father Raymond was assigned to another parish six years before John Vianney's death. But over time, John Vianney's humility broke into the heart of this priest, helped him to grow in wisdom and grace, and even helped him to come to believe that holiness and humility are important in the ministry of priesthood. Following John Vianney's death, he actually was the first to attempt to write a life about the saint. And he also made several testimonies during this canonization process. Saint, uh, or Father Raymond had such a conversion of heart over time, dealing with St. John Vianney, that he did what is probably the best compliment that a pastor can ever have that his parochial vicar would call him a saint. John Vianney, in his ministry, would go to annual conferences for the priests, and his bishop told his annual priests, uh, the priests at their annual retreat, that he wished that all of his priests had a little bit of, as he called it, John Vianney's madness, his pastoral zeal. And ultimately, by 1834, the local priests in the diocese were coming to him to, be, to have their confessions heard. They came because of his simplicity and his humility. We talked about yesterday in, in combating the devil that the weapon that the devil uses is pride. But the weapon that we use the priests use, John Vianney uses, is that of humility. But it was in this humility that John Vianney brought people to him. Because it was not by his authority, his power in the pulpit, or the privilege of the authority that he had been given as pastor, did he command such attention and devotion by his parishioners. It was because of his humility, his desire to be that vessel, to be that mere vessel in which Christ comes to people, rather than being, oh, look at me, I am John Vianney, I'm the pastor. He desired for the people to see through him, to see through him into Christ. Anyone there in ours was witness to the trust that he engendered, and he won trust by winning individual hearts. His vehicle was the priesthood. Any priest can win over trust. By being, a, by being a priest. And it's only when a priest fails in gaining trust and admiration and, and, and devotion from his parishioners is when they betray that popular confidence. The love of a priest is found in the unbounded love of that priest for his priesthood. And this is what John Vianney meant when he said that the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. By showing people, even the youngest of people, the, the simplicity of his own life, he displayed the universal love of the priest as a mediator. 
In his time, there was a world of rusty and broken clericalism. We too live in a time with that, where we've had corrupt priests and bishops. But John v Vianney is an example of a shining sacerdotalism. A clericalist is someone who uses the priesthood as a means of promoting himself, whereas someone who really is a sacerdotalist, one who conforms and offers sacrifice, it is a person that is used by the priesthood. The priestly soul is in the world, but not of it. Being a true priest engenders the trust of souls who come close to the very sense of that holiness in the priest. There was a famous actor in the 1950s, or 50s and into the uh, 80s. His name was Sir Alec Guinness, for, for those nerdy people like myself. He was the first person to play Obi-Wan in the, in the original Star Wars trilogy. He was one of the greatest modern English actors, but he's also a convert to Catholicism, and it was done in his 50s. Originally, he had a very anti-Catholic view on the church. He saw it as forbidding and an obscure thing, and even more importantly, he saw priests as arcane and suspect people. But it wasn't until shooting a film about a priest, when he was playing the priest, while filming a child ran up to him along the road and confidently took his hand, talking to him with completely trusting eyes in the language of the country that he was in, which he didn't understand. Eventually, after a couple minutes, the child ran off. The trust of the boy in an anonymous figure of a priest was a revelation to this actor. For while he was dressed as a priest, he represented that boy a universal heart and a universal symbol of trust and a universal symbol of Christ. And so it was with John Vianney that with children and other people, they entrusted him, themselves to him because of the confidence in the love of Jesus that he gave him. True priesthood reflects and reciprocates love between the priest and his parishioners. The parish here that we're gathered in is graced by that wonderful gift by the priests that serve in this parish. And it is, an, it is something that we continue to need to pray for, that we have that loving relationship between priests and parishioners. As we near the end of this novena, let us pray that our priests, our seminarians, those who are discerning, desire for their heart to be like Christ, to be, to bring the love of Christ to their parishioners, and to regain the trust that has been lost by so many sinful actions of other priests. I now ask you to Bring out your booklet and go to day eight on page 19, and we will do the prayer to St. John Vianney. St. John Vianney, in your great devotion to Christ, you imitated the great example of the beloved disciple and reclined your heart next to the heart of Christ. Help our priests and those discerning grow in the knowledge that the priesthood is indeed the love of the heart of Jesus. Help them to grow in knowledge of the mercy of his most sacred heart and give them the grace to remain in him. Help our priests be like Christ to the members of the church and likewise inspire them to grow in love of the sacred heart of Jesus. Believing in the power of your kind intercession, 
We humbly ask you to pray for us in the special intention we are hoping God will grant us through this novena. In a particular way, we pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood to the Diocese of Portland, Maine, as well as for our priests serving in this diocese. At this time, I invite you to add your own intention to this novena. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Litany of St. John Vianney, page 23. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Holy Mary, Mother of God. St. John Marie Vianney. St. John Vianney, endowed with grace from thine infancy. St. John Vianney, model of filial piety. St. John Vianney, devoted servant of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. St. John Vianney, spotless lily of purity. St. John Vianney, faithful imitator of the sufferings of Christ. St. John Vianney, abyss of humility. St. John Vianney, seraph of prayer. St. John Vianney, faithful adorer of the most blessed sacrament. St. John Vianney, ardent lover of holy poverty. St. John Vianney, tender friend of the poor. St. John Vianney, penetrate with fear of God's judgment. St. John Vianney, fortified by divine visions. St. John Vianney, who was tormented by the evil spirit. St. John Vianney, perfect model of sacerdotal virtue. St. John Vianney, firm and prudent pastor. St. John Vianney, inflamed with zeal. St. John Vianney, faithful attendant on the sick. St. John Vianney, indefatigable catechist. St. John Vianney, who did preach in words of fire. St. John Vianney, wise director of souls. St. John Vianney, specially gifted with the spirit of counsel. St. John Vianney, enlightened by light from heaven. St. John Vianney, formidable foe to Satan. St. John Vianney, compassionate with every misery. St. John Vianney, Providence of the Orphans. St. John Vianney, favored with the gift of miracles. St. John Vianney, who did reconcile so many sinners to God. St. John Vianney, who did confirm so many of the just in the way of virtue. St. John Vianney, who did taste the sweetness of death. St. John Vianney, who dost now rejoice in the glory of heaven. St. John Vianney, who give joy to those who invoke thee. St. John Vianney, heavenly patron of parish priests. St. John Vianney, model and patron and director of souls. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Christ, hear us. Pray for us, blessed Jean-Marie Vianney. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who did bestow upon blessed Jean-Marie Vianney wonderful pastoral zeal and a great fervor for prayer and penance, grant we beseech thee that by his example and intercession we may be able to gain the souls of our brethren for Christ and with them attain to everlasting glory through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. St. John Vianney, priest of ours, Pray for our priests and pray for us.
Antum ergo sacramento, venere morcerui, et anticum documento, novo ceda ritui, prestet fide supplemento, sensum de Salus honor virtus coque, sitet benedictio, procedenti abutroque, compartsit laudatio. You have given them bread from heaven, having all sweetness within it. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, give us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. 
Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. This concludes day eight of our novena. Tomorrow we conclude our novena by, with a reflection on Mary as our spiritual mother. Also, as a reminder, we will have a mass at six o'clock tomorrow night as in celebration of his feast day. And because of that, um, the beginning of the novena will be a little bit different. We're still planning to, uh, it'll go live stream at 7 o'clock, but um, basically after Mass, the Blessed Sacrament will be exposed, and, and then at 7 o'clock, I will do the Gospel Reflection, and then we will go from there. But I invite you to, be, to come to Mass if you are able, but uh, I just want to extend a great thanks and gratitude for all of you who have that have been participating, um, but I'll say for more words for tomorrow. But God bless you and see you tomorrow.